Hello and welcome to Nithranya YouTube channel. You're watching another episode of the Game in a Nutshell series designed for explaining the board game rules. My name is Branislav Berec and in this video we're going to learn how to play the game called Heat, Pedal to the Metal from Days of Wonder. The game comes with two rule books, one for the base game and the other one for the advanced game. I will cover both of them in this video, so let's get started. To set the game up, place the selected game board in the middle of the table. Then each player chooses a color and takes all the components of that color, player mat, gear pawn, the car, 12 speed cards and 3 starting upgrade cards. Then check the game board and see how many heat cards and stress cards you need to add to your starting cards. So here we have 3 stress cards and 6 heat cards. These heat cards are placed in this space on your player mat called the engine space. Now take those stress cards, the speed cards and the starting upgrade cards, shuffle them and place them on this space on your player mat, this is your draw deck. Then place your gear pawn on the first gear and then take all the cars in the game and place them in the random order on the starting grid. This starting order is actually the player order for the first round of the game. Draw 7 cards from your draw deck into your hand and keep these cards hidden from other players and we're ready to go. One last note before we start, if you play with less experienced players and you are one of the more experienced players, consider removing one or two heat cards from your engine. This will help level the playing field. Heat is a racing game, so each player has one car on the grid and tries to win the race by being the first player to cross the start-finish line after the predetermined number of laps. Here we have two laps, it could be three laps on other tracks and for your first game you may consider racing for just one lap. The game is played in rounds and each round all players perform the following four steps. They are printed on your player mat and actually as you can see there are 9 steps but 4 major steps. In the first step you will adjust your gear, then in the second step you will choose and play cards from your hand into a play area and you will play as many cards as the gear number for the current round. Then in the steps 3 through 7 you will move your car and resolve the effects on the track and then in the last step you will have a chance to discard some of the cards from your hand to your discard pile and then draw back up to 7 cards. Now we will go through all these steps in more detail. So in the first step you have to adjust your gear. You may leave it where it is from the previous round or you may shift it up or down one gear. However you may also shift the gear up or down by two positions but that will cost you one heat. So for example if shifting from first gear up to third gear you have to pay a heat and you do that by taking one heat card from the engine space and placing it in your discard pile. If you wouldn't have a heat card in your engine space you would not be able to do it and as we will see later when you have to pay the heat and you don't have any heat cards in your engine space it has some bad consequences for you, so manage your heat carefully. Then in the second step you will play cards from your hand. Your gear number indicates exactly how many cards you will play, so in the third gear you will play three cards. Place the selected cards face down in front of you, keep the other cards in your hand. By the way you can do these first two steps simultaneously and once everyone has made their choice Starting with the first player for the current round and proceeding to the last player, each player will perform the steps 3 to 9. This time you will not play simultaneously, the first player must complete their turn before next player proceeds with their turn and so on. When determining the player order the frontmost car goes first and then proceed to the last car and when you have two cars in the same space the car which is closer to this race line goes first. The race line is this thick wide line on one or the other side of the track and note the position of the race line may change at these corners. 
This is the line for the corner and this is the maximum speed in the corner. We'll talk about that later. So in this example, before that corner, the race line is on the outside. After the corner, the race line is on the inside. So the player order here is the silver car, black car, then red, yellow, blue and green. So when it's your turn, in step three, first reveal your cards and add the values on the cards to determine your speed. Here we have two plus three plus two, that's seven. Now move that many spaces on the track. So we would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. After you finish your move, place your car closest to the race line. Now, although players are playing one by one in this phase of the round, in reality they are moving simultaneously, so other cars never prevent you from passing through them. So here we would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The only exception would be if you would have to end your movement in the space, which is completely blocked by other cars. So here we would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Since these spaces are full, place your car in the next available space, again, closest to the racing line. Anytime you play this stress card, which represent lapses of concentration as you race around the track, you will apply an unknown speed between one and four. So ideally try to avoid playing these cards when you approach the corner. Because for each stress card you play, start revealing the cards from your draw deck. And if it's the speed card, it's the card with this speed symbol, you would add that card to your play area. If it's not a speed card, place it in your discard pile immediately and continue flipping the card until you find the one which is actually a speed card. Now note that these cards, these basic upgrade cards, don't have this speed symbol. So if you draw the card with five or zero, or in the advanced game, when you draw a card, which is an upgrade card, put it in the discard pile as well. You have to find a card which has this speed symbol. When you're done for each stress card you have played, again, sum up the values and that's the number of spaces you have to move on the track. In rare circumstances, you may end up in a situation when you have too many heat cards in your hand and you are not able to play as many cards as required by the current gear. If that happens, use as many playable cards as possible and then cover the difference with heat cards from your hand. However, your car is damaged, so it doesn't move at all. You can completely ignore your speed cards or any cards with a number. You would move your gear pawn back to the first gear and discard the cards from the play area. Then you would proceed directly to the step number nine, refill your hand with up to seven cards. Then the next step is called the adrenaline step. If you are the last car to move in this round, or one of the two last cars in a race with five or more cars, you may, you don't have to, but you may add plus one to your speed and you also have one additional cooldown effect. You can use both of these effects in the next step, step five, called the react step. In this step, you activate all kinds of symbols you have access to in the current round and you may activate them in any order you want. You gain these symbols from your gear, from the adrenaline effect, and when playing with the advanced rules, you may have access to symbols on the upgrade cards. I'll talk about that later in the second part of the video. In the base game, you only have an access to the cooldown effect and this boost symbol. We will start with the cooldown. If you have this cooldown from this adrenaline step or if you are in the second or first gear, you have access to one or in the first gear to three cooldown effects. Each cooldown effect allows you to take one card, one heat card from your hand and put it back in this engine space. Don't forget that in the base game, you already start the game with one heat card in your deck. But remember, the cooldown effect only allows you to return the heat card from your hand to the engine space, not from the discard pile. Then the second effect which is available in the base game is this plus symbol, which is exactly the same plus as on these stress cards 
and that's the boost effect. You may use this boost once per turn, but unlike the stress cards, this time you have to pay one heat, so you have to take one heat card from the engine space and place it in a discard pile, and again, you start drawing cards from your draw deck until you find a speed card. Remember, just to reiterate, in this fifth step, the react step, if you have an access to these adrenaline effects, so increasing your speed by one and the cooldown effect, you may use them now and you may use all those effects in any order you want. So you may decide to use the boost before you add plus one to your speed. You may use the cooldown effect before you use the boost, which costs you one hit and so on. Then in the sixth step, you may apply the slipstream effect. When you end your move next to a car or directly behind a car, you may, you don't have to, you may apply a slipstream effect, which moves you two additional spaces forward. That doesn't increase your overall speed, so if you have the speed of 6, slipstream will not increase it to 8, it will remain 6, which is important for the corners because of these limits. We will talk about that in just a minute. When using the slipstream, all other movement rules apply, so if you end up next to a car and you have to move two spaces forward, you can skip the cards even if they block the space in front of you. But if you use the slipstream and the space where you would have to move to is completely occupied, you only move to the next available space closest to the racing line. In a rare case, it may happen that even if you would use the slipstream, you would have no place to go and you would have to remain in the same space. The next step, step number seven, only applies if you crossed through a corner. So let's say here we have the speed of three. To cut the corner, you have to cross this corner line. With a speed of three, it would be one, two, three. Now, if your speed is equal or lower than the speed limit in that corner, nothing happens. Remember, if you use the slipstream now, you may move two more spaces forward, but that doesn't increase your speed. So it's still three, and we are within the speed limit. If your speed is higher than the speed limit, here we have five, when you cross that corner with the higher speed than the limit, you have to pay heat equal to the difference between your current speed and the speed limit. Here we have the speed of five, limit is three, so that is two heat, which we need to pay. Now, if you wouldn't have enough heat cards in your engine space, so if you would have to pay two heat, but we only have one heat card, you have to pay all the heat you have and then you spin out. Move your car back to the first space before the corner and closest to the race line. Then following the symbology here, if you spin out and you were in the first or second gear, take one new stress card from the deck and add it to your hand. And if you would spin out in the third or fourth gear, you would take two new stress cards into your hand. Then shift your gear pawn back to the first gear. Then the step number eight is optional. You may discard some cards from your hand to the discard pile. This will free up some space in your hand before the next step. However, as these symbols indicate, you may never discard the stress cards and the heat cards from your hand. When you discard the cards in the discard pile, only the top card is the public knowledge. Nobody, except you, can go through your discard pile. And then finally, step number nine, discard all the cards from your play area and replenish your hand back to seven cards from your draw deck. Anytime your draw deck runs out, anytime during your turn, reshuffle the discard pile and create the new draw pile. One small clarification to that rule, if you draw cards during your turn, let's say because of the stress card, and you run out of the cards in your draw deck, reshuffle the discard pile, but don't include the cards which are still in your play area. They have not been officially discarded yet. You win the race by being the first player to cross the finish line after the number of laps indicated on the game board. If two or more cars finish the race in the same round, 
then the car which is furthest ahead after the finish line wins that race. If they finish in the same space, then the car which is closest to the race line wins the race. However, to cross the finish line, you may not use the slipstream. So in this example, the silver car would not be allowed to use the slipstream and move to the first space. You have to cross the finish line without a slipstream. At the end of the round, place all the cars that have already finished the race on the corresponding spaces on this Hall of Fame space and then continue the next round with the remaining cars. In this section of the video I'm going to cover the advanced rules for the game. And we will start with the garage module. With this module each player will build their customized car with three upgrade cards. These starting upgrade cards are not used, so you can return them back to the box. And instead you can use these upgrade cards. These ones with this symbol are advanced, these ones are basic upgrade cards. If you want, you can only use the basic or only the advanced or mix them together. To build your cars, you will go through three drafting rounds of those upgrade cards. You do it before the race, but after you place the cars on the starting grid. First, shuffle all the upgrade cards you have selected for the game and then deal out one card per player plus three additional cards. So in a four player game, it would be seven cards. This is the market for the first drafting round and you perform this draft from the back to the front of the starting grid. So in this example, the red player would choose the card first, then the green player would choose one of the cards, let's say this one, then yellow and blue. Then discard all the leftover cards and repeat the same process, but this time starting from the front going to the back. So with the blue player in this example picking the first, continuing with the yellow player, green and red. Again, discard all the leftover cards, create the market for the final drafting round and just like in the first round, go from the back of the starting grid to the front of the grid. Then shuffle your selected upgrade cards into your starting deck. And by the way, you can find a description of all those cards in the rulebook and in general, if you have a number here, you would add that number to your overall speed. If you have more than one number, you can choose which one you want, which can be very useful in different situations. And if you have the plus symbol, it's the same boost effect as with the basic stress card, but without that stress. Then all the additional symbols can be applied during the react phase. And if the symbol has the small exclamation mark, it's a mandatory symbol. All other effects are optional. So once you shuffle all your starting cards, draw your starting hand of seven cards and you're ready to go. The next module is the Legends module. Legends are automated opponents you can compete against in a solo mode or in a multiplayer mode as the additional opponents. They are controlled by this deck of Legends cards. So to set the game up with Legends, shuffle the deck and add as many Legends as you want. Then during the game, when it's the first legend to move in the current round, reveal the card from the top of the legends deck and this card will be used by all legends in the game for the current round. Each legend will only perform the A move or the B move depending on where their car is on the track relative to this legends line. The Legends line is also indicated by this icon on the track. So here we have one, then here's the next one and so on. Each Legend line corresponds to the next corner. So if the Legend has already passed the Legend line and is approaching the corner, it will use this A move. And if the Legend has not passed that Legends line yet, it will use this B move as indicated by these icons here. So let's start with this A move when the legend has already passed the legends line. In our example, let's start with this yellow legend already behind the legend line, but in front of the corner. In that case, the legend will move as many spaces as the speed limit of that corner, plus the number in this yellow diamond above the helmet of the color of that legend. 
So here the speed limit of the corner is 3 and the number above the yellow helmet is 1. So the total is 4, which means the yellow legend will move 4 spaces. The red legend is also behind the legend's line, so that move will be 3 plus 1 because that's the number above the red helmet. So that's 4 and in this case the red legend has not made it through the corner yet. Then this green legend has not passed through the legend's line yet. So it will use this B move and it will attempt to move as many spaces as the number indicated on the helmet of the same color. So here it's 13. However, since the green legend is only 10 spaces away from the next corner, moving by 13 spaces would actually clear the corner with a much higher speed than the speed limit. So the green legend would not move by 13 spaces. Instead, that legend will move to a space just before the corner marked with this diamond and this number. So one, meaning the green legend would move to the space marked with the number one just before that corner. And finally, the blue legend has also not passed through the legend's line yet. Based on the legend's card, it will attempt to move by 10 spaces. And since the blue legend is 13 spaces away from the corner, it will move those 10 spaces. Note that legends never use split stream. They never use the cooldown effect or heat cards. However, they do count for the adrenaline effect even though they don't have any benefit from that effect. Only human players do, but only if they are in the last two positions, if there are five or more cars in the race, or in the last position, if there are only four or fewer cars in the race. When you have to draw the new Legends card, but the draw deck is empty, reshuffle the discard pile and create the new draw pile. The next module is Weather and Road Conditions. You can modify any track with these tokens, and you prepare these weather tokens and road condition tokens before you choose the upgrade cards so that you can choose the best upgrade cards for the current race. So to set them up, shuffle these weather tokens and also shuffle all these road condition tokens. Then deal one random weather token on this space on the game board and immediately adjust the number of heat cards and the stress cards available for the race. In this example, as the iconology indicates, three of your heat cards would be placed in your starting draw pile before the race. In this example, you would draw one additional stress card. In this case, you would have one additional heat card available and so on. Then shuffle the road condition tokens and draw one randomly for each corner in the game. And if that token has this line indication, move it to this space because such token doesn't affect the corner. It affects the entire sector, which is a number of spaces between one corner and the next corner. If you draw the token, which doesn't have this arrow, keep it in space, it will affect the corner. Do this for all spaces on the game board and return any unused tokens back to the box. These road condition tokens have permanent effects either on the corners or on the entire sectors. And if the token has this exclamation mark symbol, it is a mandatory effect. So in this example, when you cross this corner, you immediately have to pay one heat. And if you have this specific road condition token on the game board, you have to apply the weather effect for the current sector. So in this example, if you would end your movement in any space of this sector, you can always apply one cooldown effect. And finally, the championship system. There are three pre-built sort of historic seasons in the game. 1961 with three races, 1962 again with three races, and 1963. But you can build any type of championship you want. Place this championship mat on the table, shuffle this deck of sponsorship cards and place it face down on this space. Similarly, choose the set of upgrade cards, shuffle them and place them on this space. Again, starting upgrade cards are not used in the championship 
And with that, the championship is set up. And before each race, find the event card for the current race. So, for example, for the first race of the 1961, it will be this one. It indicates which track you have to use. And then apply all the effects of these symbols on the right side. This one indicates that each player will add one upgrade card to their starting deck. So first, place the cards on the starting grid. You can place them in a random order for the first race. And then from the last space to the first space in the championship order in each upcoming race. And then starting from the last player, proceeding to the first player, you would draft one card from the market using the standard rules we have already covered. And then, probably not in the first race, but more likely in the subsequent races, the human player who is in the last position or the furthest back on the starting grid will have a chance to take one of their upgrade cards they already have even from previous races, and swap that card with a leftover card from the market. Then shuffle your upgrade cards into your starting deck and the leftover upgrade cards to the upgrades deck. Then before you draw your starting hand of seven cards, take a look at this number. Here we have two and that's the number of sponsorship cards you take into your hand. So each player in this case would gain two sponsorship cards. Only then draw additional cards so that you have seven cards in your hand. Then the next symbol indicates the press corner. Take the corresponding track card, in our example it's Great Britain, and locate the letter, in this case it's A, it's over here, and that's going to be the press corner. Place this press corner standee next to that corner on the game board. Finally, Set up the weather tokens and race condition tokens and you're ready to start. Don't forget to read the event for the current race so that all players are familiar with it. During the race, when you play these sponsorship cards, they work in the exact same way as the upgrade cards. However, there's this symbol which indicates that you have to permanently discard this card after use. So it's just a one-time use. On the other hand, Anytime you gain the sponsorship card, you add that card directly into your hand. Then in this press corner, the media representatives are waiting for something spectacular to happen in that corner. Now, when you cross that corner, either by using slipstream, so for example, I would go two and then additional two spaces, or if you cross that corner and you exceed the speed limit by at least two or more, and don't forget to apply any modifiers. So in this example, the red player would have to cross that corner with a speed of six or more. In either case, you would immediately gain one sponsorship card. After the race, record the championship points won by each player. All players will keep their upgrade cards and all unplayed sponsorship cards, they will be part of your starting deck in the next race. And then shuffle all the used and discarded sponsorship cards back into the sponsorship deck. So that's how you play Heat, pedal to the metal. If you would have any questions or comments, I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. If you like the series, please subscribe. You can support the channel on the Patreon page or click the thank you button under the video to send us some symbolic support. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell. My name is Branislav Beret and hope to see you next time. I would like to thank everyone who has ever supported the channel and especially the current supporters listed on this page. If you too would like to support the channel in creation of videos like this and other video tutorials and other content on this channel, please visit the patreon.com slash